Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Uh, heading up Silicon Angle's continuous coverage of the Gen 8 announcement. We're here in Las Vegas. Uh, back in Las Vegas. A lot going on this week. Uh, we've got the VMware Partner Conference. Uh, the TDWI conference is going on. Uh, your colleagues from Vertica, I'm sure, are there. But, uh, so we've got the European perspective uh, now. Uh, Florian Reithmeyer, who's the VP of ISS in EMEA, and Sylvia Hockmuth, who's the Director of Marketing for ESN EMEA. Welcome. Welcome. Good Thanks to have you guys. Yeah. Thank you for Great coming into here. the Cube. First time uh, Cube. Now, um, so we want to talk about the, uh, the announcement, but I really want to get into the, uh, the EMEA perspective. So first of all, where are you guys from? Well, I'm from Germany, Munich. Actually, yep. that's where I'm based, yeah. Okay, you guys both based in, uh, in Germany, yes, right? Europe. And you're covering your pan, pan Europe, right? Pan, well, pan EMEA, I guess. Europe, Middle East, and yeah. Africa. Yeah, okay, and uh, so why don't we start with what's going on in the European climate? You know, the United States, we hear a lot about well, p potential softness in Europe, and everybody gets a little concerned. Um, um, what's different in Europe these days? Well, you know, I, I think the mega trends in IT are probably the same, mm. right? This is about big data and obviously the change of unstructured data versus structured data. You have this massive explosion. You have cloud or the way how IT is delivered, and you have this whole thing about mobility and the, you know, just the proliferation prof of devices and all the aspects that come with it. The difference, obviously, is the economic climate, and obviously Europe is a mo is a, is a sum of many countries, so uh, it's not the same everywhere. But uh, yeah, I think obviously there's pressure on the overall economic situation. There's pressures on, on, on IT budgets as a consequence for it. And uh, you know, I think there's also obviously um, pressure on, on, on getting going green and, uh, and on power consumption and carbon footprint. Do cell phone uh, calls drop as much in Europe as they do in the United States, or is it better? I don't have a. I don't have a. <laughs> you don't a, have a problem. I, I don't have a statistics here. <laughs> no, it works well. It works well for us. <laughs> so what about um, what about Gen Eight? Um, what's going on in, in Europe with this announcement? Is it is it is it timed uh, for the same delivery? Talk about that a little bit. Absolutely, it's a it, it's a live it's obviously a live conference, and we we this is a global investment or announcement. And Sylvia will talk a little bit more about uh, how we actually getting the message out of Europe. But obviously, we're excited because it comes at a perfect time, right? And uh, the capabilities we have with the Gen 8 alone uh, announcement is is just fantastic for the requirements we have in, we have in Europe. So, yes, very excited about it. It's synchronized. It goes around the globe, and uh, you know we're getting a lot of positive feedback from the customers there. What's um What's your perspective, Sylvia? I think this is. One we have to get nice and close a bit. Okay? Yes. I'm sorry. This is one of the most uh, important announcements HP has done in the last two years in this area. Uh, I think also the customers were waiting for that. So in marketing now, it's really very important that we start to get the message out. So this is a live event here today, but we have the time zone difference. So we acted almost in uh, parallel here. So first what we did is, so in Europe, Middle East and Africa, so about 70% 70 70 of our business goes indirect, so we have roughly about 3,000 gold partners and 5,500 refer, uh, preferred partners. And so what we did is we already briefed them under non-disclosure, prepared them, also did new, uh, pro new product introduction trainings with them so that they can talk to their customers. But what's also very important is, is that in the next uh, two months, we go into 44 different countries in Europe. So you can imagine a big effort, different languages, traditions, etc., etc. So we go 44 countries. And with that, we outreach to more than 7,000 customers to bring the message out. So we invest a lot in demo equipment and exhibitions uh, in these events. As well, as well as our whole uh, pre-sales teams will be there to do a deep dive with the customers uh, who want to do that. Uh, in the same way, what we are doing here, digital, so we also do a lot digital now uh, in Europe, believe it or not, so uh, many online campaigns are going on for demand generation in particular for the Gen 8 announcement in its uh, product portfolio because then, of course, the main goal is to fill the sales pipeline with this new product introduction. So um, the channel in the United States is, is quite interesting. As I've said, there's a big, um, what we call a land grab going on for the channel, right? Uh, everybody's going hard after the channel and giving MDF funds and, and uh, you know, trying to obviously sign up uh, channel partners and make them more productive. I'm sure there's a similar desire to 
to get channel partners going in, in Europe, but what's different in Europe, Middle East, and Africa in the channel versus what you see in the United States? Or maybe you don't have great visibility in the United States, but, and if you don't, how would you characterize the, the, the climate in the channel right now in EMEA? Well, I think everybody in an economic climate that is not necessarily up for growth is, is trying to optimize margins and is trying to find uh, opportunities for growth. And, you know, we have that luxury that in Europe almost every second x86 server is a HP server, which is a fantastic position to I'm be I'm sorry, in. what was that statistic again? Almost every second every x86 server that is shipped in Europe is actually a HP server. One out of two. Yeah, okay. One out of two almost. So the question is really where is that additional growth? How can we they leverage the strengths of that brand and that position into additional revenue and margin opportunities? And more importantly, how can they drive more value for the end customers? And this is where Gen 8 with its features comes in. There's a fantastic opportunity for product and technology differentiation. You know, like you had Jim Gantier talking earlier about, there is capabilities. Although we like competition, we do believe we have set the bar very high in some of the capabilities that we've invested over the last two years. So there is product and technology differentiation, but there's also great opportunity for the channel to actually drive closer intimacy with their end customers because they can move up the food chain into more consultative, more proactive service engagement. Make sure actually they can deliver integrated solutions, they can actually focus more of their time rather than trying to fix issues on the platform, on the data center, to actually proactive services. So those are, again, great opportunities for the channel to first of all drive customer intimacy up, customer satisfaction up, but also have new revenue and margin streams. How about Africa? I mean, that's kind of an interesting topic um, that you don't hear a lot of people in our industry talking about, but it's a, physically it's a huge place. Um, it's a huge market, um, it's just very diverse, um, but it looks like it's got a lot of potential. What are your thoughts on, on Africa and, and, and if and when it will emerge as a, as a powerhouse consumer of information technology? You know, those things come in waves, and when you see how the mobile phone penetration is, and you, really a mobile phone is a good indication of what used to be a couple of years, the PC penetration, right? If you look at the penetration of mobile phone usage and the services that come with it, it gives you indication of the opportunity and the massive growth in that. We've recognized this uh, for quite a while, and obviously we have been investing in this, and during last year we have been investing in coverage. Right, So our route to market, our preferred way to cover that market is through the channel partners. So we've invested a lot in distributors and resellers to actually build capabilities. And we have a, a couple of large offices there to cover the clients. And that's a key differentiation uh, to, to some of our competitors. And as part of this focus on Africa, we've actually opened a number of new offices in last year to just show the HP presence and the proximity to our clients in that country. And again, to bring it back to this announcement, you know, what do customers need? They, need? they need reliable data center operations. They need to make sure they can service it remotely very easily. And this is where some of the features of Gen 8 just perfectly fit in. You know, with the remote monitoring capabilities, with that proactive break fix, with that proactive monitoring, um, and almost uh, automated uh, capabilities uh, to run more stable. You know, it's a perfect combination. On the one side, we want to be in the country, we want to drive better coverage and uh, be a good uh, partner uh, in those countries. On the other side, we bring technology that just brings more consistency around the globe and the way to run a data center. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in Africa, you may not have in all countries, mean, maybe South Africa, it's built up you know, somewhat, but I mean, in many other countries, you may not have the skill sets you know, necessary to manage servers that aren't automated. So it seems like there would be a good good fit here. Correct. Um, okay, good. Um, Sylvia, I had a question for you, uh, specifically around converged infrastructure. I mean, it's a big theme of HPs, obviously, in the last couple of years. How is that playing in, in EMEA, and what are you seeing as the big trends there across ESSN? So... Uh it is definitely one of the biggest trends which have been also created in HP the last two years. So if I may also quote uh, Dave Donatelli from this morning, so when we started to uh, announce that in 2009, the converged infrastructure strategy, hardly anybody was talking about 
And so now even our competitors are following us. So if you Google converged infrastructure, now you get millions of possibilities to click on also with our competitors. So what's now really important is, is that we show the acceleration of the converged infrastructure uh, strategy so that what we have announced today follows that path. So we started with this 70% IT, 70% uh, uh, of IT spent is spent on the IT scroll just to keep the old legacy alive and you only can invest uh, with your 30% of your IT spent into new innovation. And so with today's announcement, we really can help to flip this around and also to enable the data center manager to think more about creating new services for their internal clients or for their customers. So it's definitely a, a key strategy uh, where we enable our customers uh, to invest in the future. Definitely we see the converged infrastructure strategy as the enabler to the cloud, but it's also a step in between, which is the virtualization to cloud. So yeah, it's the main theme for all marketing activities in Europe, Middle East and Africa. And I think Dave also mentioned, uh, Dave Donatelli in his talk this morning about the preponderance <coughs> of um, networking sales that go through the channel. Um, so obviously uh, the converged infrastructure piece is uh, very channel driven, I would imagine. Is that the case or is it more weighted toward larger organizations? Well, with the converged infrastructure strategy, of course, the the first and main approach was in the large enterprise uh, segment mm. uh, because uh, in the way it's set up, uh, many customers feel that they need to have a large enterprise in a, a large data center. But uh, more and more, we also create, let's say, uh, solutions uh, for the SMB market, which then can go uh, through the channel. But you're absolutely right. It's it's. Uh, rather in the enterprise customer segment and commercial customer segment and not so much in the SMB segment yet. Do you see that changing? Well, it depends on the services and the businesses these SMB customers going to offer. And yes, I see it changing in the context of any kind of cloud uh, services and, and uh, offers in these areas. Okay, uh, my last question is, is, we have to ask a cloud question. So, it's, you know, <laughs> and, uh, and I'm just, cloud. yeah, you got to have a cloud <laughs> question in there. So I'm just curious, I mean, uh, or, or is, is the EMEA market, are they as enthusiastic as cloud? Are they, or as they, are they as skeptical as, the, as we are in the United States? What, uh, what do you see? No, I think uh, the market is absolutely excited. I think what is important is that we actually separate what, it, what cloud means for, for whom. And I guess there is a lot of different, uh, different definitions out there. Um, our approach has been always very consistent. We want to make sure it's not a rip and replace approach. We want to make sure we, we enable people to get on this journey. And there's a lot of capabilities we deliver on a technology side, but also from a services side. So we do cloud uh, exploration workshops. We do assessments how to get from A to B on that cloud journey that is aligned and synchronized with the business strategy. So, and that we obviously have the broadest portfolio across the compute, the service, storage, power and cooling and the management to make it happen. So yes, a lot of excitement, a lot of uh, POCs going on, a lot of discussions and workshops happening. We see a trend that for the companies that actually drive a revenue model out of this, they're moving faster. So we've deployed a lot of uh, cloud uh, POCs and real deployment in Europe by now. Wherever there's a revenue stream connected, there's a faster appetite to move. When we see larger enterprises with more complex environments, they tend to take a little longer. But yeah, the excitement is there, and I think we are far beyond the excitement. We have a very clear funnel uh, with our customers, and we have a very clear offering to actually move from A to B. So for us, cloud is not up in the cloud. Cloud is reality. And, uh, you know, I think there's great confirmations from external consultants, from feedback we get from the customers, and even from the channel partner that are a vital part of that value proposition, actually, uh, to, to really make cloud a reality. And, you know, just, just to make sure you understand where we're playing with the channel, we, build, we see a lot of channel partners and resellers rethinking their, their strategy. They say, do I stay as a reseller? or do I actually become a cloud provider? And right. we have a fantastic program called Cloud Agile that allows actually channel partners to move in that direction. And we've deployed you know, uh, what is called CCOEs, it's called Cloud Centers of Expertise, for actually channel partners to adopt a cloud. They get a lot of knowledge and insights from us, 
uh, to actually build this up and use that to actually show their capabilities and their expertise to their clients and to their customers. So I think a lot of excitement, a lot of uptake, and obviously we see the ones that have a revenue model behind that moving faster than some of the other enterprises. So I would say the similarities are greater than the differences uh, in, our, in our regions, no doubt. Um, Florian and Sylvia, thanks very much in, in for coming inside the Cube and sharing the EMEA perspective. It was great to have you. Good luck with the, uh, the rollout um, in EMEA, and, uh, and uh, good to see you, good to meet you. Great. Thank thanks you very much. Take care. Thanks.